My name is Capri Maddox, Executive Director of the LA Civil Rights Department, and it's a true pleasure to officially launch the Vote for LA Repair participatory budgeting. It's happening. <laughs> Right now in Watts and across Southeast Los Angeles, as well as Boyle Heights, Mission Hills, shout it out, Panorama City, North Hills, residents are deciding how to spend $3 million in their communities. Participatory budgeting gives real people real power over real money. It's a process that allows decision-making power to go directly to people, empowering them to make decisions to address issues as relates to equity and justice. Of course, we would not be here today without the tireless efforts of our repair steering committee and advisory committees. Let's give them a round of applause. Stand up, stand up, committee members. Please stand up, get, get your love, get your love. I need, I need you to know that we could not do this work. These are people that spent a lot of their own time and their own resources to make sure that the residents of their neighborhood came out, showed out, and showed up to make a difference in Los Angeles because you cannot rely on government alone to solve the problem. So we are excited that the folks here believed in the community power. I also want to recognize the work of our community engagement partners who are leading outreach efforts and idea collecting to get out the vote. Please wave too. Please wave. Thank you so much. These partners come from the community and for the past eight months, they have been leaning in in a significant way to get us to this place where we can now vote. I really want to give a special, special shout out to our host here, Children's Institute for hosting all of us opening your hearts and your homes to this work, and the participatory budgeting project for lending their expertise to this process. Um, definitely, you should know that none of this would happen without my boss, our leader, our beloved Karen Bass. Um, give her a shout out because you know she has walked the talk when it comes to communities, community organizing, and believes in the power of community and people power. So I really want to thank her as well as the city council for releasing the funds to make this happen. The repair program is the first participatory budgeting process in Los Angeles and it is the largest in all of California. I want you to know that LA Repair is about lifting up communities that have been wronged for so long. For the first time we are letting people decide what is best for their future and these are communities have been most impacted by institutional and structural racism and allowing these communities to decide how to address these challenges. Our nine repair zones um, are in areas that were redlined. These are communities that suffered the highest amounts of poverty, the highest amounts of even COVID mortality rates and pollution. You should know that these neighborhood, in these neighborhoods, it's no wonder that in all these neighborhoods that are hardest hit by institutional racism, guess what? Still in 2023, 87% of the people that live in these neighborhoods are people of color. This is half of the folks that are living in poverty in the entire city, in these nine neighborhoods that suffered redlining and other um, disparities over the years. I wanna give a special shout out to the Office of Racial Equity that is here today. Our E-team, our equity team led by David Price, um, who came up with the analysis to show us how to grow equity in these neighborhoods. And the ideas that are being voted on today came from community members and local community-based organizations that have offered proposals for turning these ideas into reality through our trusted community-based partners. We've received hundreds of program ideas from rental assistance to environmental programs to programs for our seniors and our youth. I urge anyone over the age of 15 who's who, who's who's our youngest person here that's over the age of 15 that can vote all right so you're one of the younger people here but i know we have some we have a teenagers over here that may be able to vote so i want you to know if you are over the age of 18 and you live work or study in these zones i want you to vote now before april 30th you can vote at lacityrepair.org or you can vote at community vote centers like this one right here. 
Once the vote is concluded, the ideas with the most votes in each community will be funded and implemented. And then we will begin the process all over again in six more areas. Uh, Arlita Pacoima, Skid Row, South LA, West Lake, West Adams, Limerick Park, Baldwin Village, and the Wilmington Harbor Gateway area back in the 15th. In all, we, have, we will have distributed $8.5 million in city funds to nine neighborhoods through an entirely community-driven and people-powered process. And of course, we could not have done this work without the beloved Allison Wilhite in the back. Allison, she leads this effort. And we have other members of our team here, and I'll shout you out quickly. Milo Samoth, Ronnell Hampton, clap them up. Uh, Diamond James, Joey Garcia, Luz Casianos, Omar, Car uh, Omar Cardenas, and I just want to thank you all so much for being here. Uh, Omar Cardenas, sorry about that, Omar. I'm telling you, it is a great honor to bring up my friend, uh, someone that I've known a long time from me when I was an intern at the city attorney's office and he was a chief of staff. Still that guy, salt of the earth, down with the people, rolling to make a difference. And I know he's got an event over at Grape Street and, and you're right after this, but please have attorney, councilman, Tim McCosker to, um, to the stage. Come on, come on, come on, Council. I know you got her hand, but thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Tim McCosker, Councilman of the 1-5. Let's hear it for Capri Maddox right now. Let's hear it for Capri Maddox. Thank you so much. So why do we call it the 1-5, the Uno Cinco? Why do we call it the 1-5? We call it for, it, it actually relates to what we are doing here today because the Council District 15 is made up of San Pedro and Harbor City and Wilmington and Harbor Gateway and the beautiful community of Watts. The beautiful community of Watts. The be five, one district, one district, five beautiful, deserving communities. And so we call it the one five, the Uno Cinco, because it's important for us to remind ourselves every day that every single thing we do needs to inure to the benefit of that community and to the community as a whole. And we need to make sure that we are all coming up together. And that's what we're doing here right now. And I really thank the leadership of the Civil Rights Department and Capri and her wonderful team and our mayor. And this, this is an act of justice. What we have done, what we have done and what the folks that we're following have done is set aside money and said to the community, you know what's best for your community. And we are fighting against the institutional racism, the sort of the systemic racism over time. And it will take us time to overcome it. And it's not over today. And it's not over tomorrow. We keep going, and we keep going, and we keep going, right? But it does, it, it does matter today that what we are saying is that communities get to decide what are worthy projects, and we've done that. And so you have a list of worthy projects. And then we say to the community, you know what's best for your families, for your babies, for your seniors, for, your, for, for everyone in your community to access services and to have that next step into a, into a healthy and safe future. And so I encourage every single person in the 1-5 of course, but every single person in this great city to vote. Go to repair.lacity.org, figure out how you can vote, and do that thing. Vote. It's, it, make, it makes such a difference. To my great colleague, Hugo Soto Martinez, and I, it matters to us when we see folks participating in the government. We will notice. We will encourage it, we will honor it, and we will notice. So get out there and get out and vote. And I just thank everyone for being here. I really appreciate my beloved community of Watts. I appreciate everyone for being here. And I look forward to participating with you on this cycle and the next cycle and the next cycle for as long as we can do it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman. And I know you have to go and make history again just a few blocks from here. But I want to give a, a special recognition to um, you know, the community for, for stepping up in a significant way. I kind of think about this, uh, Claudia and Liliana, I see you here also from our team, Claudia Luna, our assistant general manager. I want to let you know that I think about this like reparations for the community. This is like, you know, we're repairing some of the wrongs and people in government over, you know, over 100 years ago and even maybe 50 years ago did some of the things that were wrong um, and impacted communities, particularly um, these communities that we are addressing um, in, the, in these spaces. So I want to let you know we are righting wrongs in City Hall and the leadership of, 
of these new leaders that are coming in, like Council Member Tim McCosker, and of course, someone who also walks the talk in a significant way, Council Member Ugo, um, Ugo Soto Martinez, who is a believer and who's actually walked these streets as a kid. And so he's no stranger to this community, even though he represents another area of our city, this is home to him as well. And I couldn't be more excited to lift this work. He is the chair of the LA Civil Rights, um, he's the, uh, the chair of the LA Civil Rights Council uh, um, Committee and our leader in these spaces and allows us to do a lot of this work. So without further ado, Council Member Ugo Soto Martinez, the mic is yours. Wow, good morning everyone, buenos dias. I wanna say what a joyful, joyful day today. Like just being in this space uh, with this energy just gives me, just give me so much joy. Uh, I, first of all, I wanna thank Capri Maddox for all the amazing work that you're doing. Uh, I've been in council for two months, we're getting to know each other. And this is just an amazing reflection of the work that you've done and I could not be happier to have you at the helm. And to the entire team that helped work on this and the community members that have been participating, again, very, very deep thanks. And of course, to my colleague, uh, Tim McCosker, as, as Capri mentioned, I, I roam these streets, I walk these streets. Uh, I lived on, on 83rd in Hooper and I went to Jordan High School. I'm a proud Bulldog, class of 2001. And uh, yeah, I guess I, uh, but I gotta say, uh, although I don't live on this side of town anymore, you have an amazing champion representing you at City Hall in Tim, Tim McCosker. I could not be more proud to call him a colleague, a friend, because I know that he believes this, these, these issues to its core. And so I'm very happy to be here and representing the, the one five, but we all know there's, one, there's five communities, but this one's the best, right? Yeah. We, we know this is the best, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, uh, you know, um, we've, we have come a long way. You know, I, I remember growing up, in, uh, growing up in South Central, coming to Watts, and always having the feeling that the, the government wasn't there for us. They didn't represent us. They didn't know about our, vi our values, our issues. I felt excluded, ignored. This is amazing that we are gonna be able to decide how this money is spent. That is incredible and it is due to the work that the community members have done over years because it is the community that is closest to the problems. The people closest to the problems are the people that know the solutions. And so this is, I think, the beginning of, of just a beautiful thing and we have an, a, a total change in leadership and Karen Bass and she understands that as well. So uh, I just so joyful to, to make sure that this is successful, that this is a model that we empower our communities because we trust our communities. Because we say, you know what? We believe the housekeepers, we believe the maids, we believe the folks cooking the food. They are the ones that should be empowered as much as possible. And so if you're 15 or, or over, please go out and vote, participate, tell your friends. Let's get this on social media, let's get this on TikTok. Let's get people involved. Because this is the future of what government should look like, right? And so. Let's, let's move onward with joy and love and, and let's bring the community together and I uh, look forward uh, as a head of, uh, the head of a very, very important committee, I, I look forward to continuing the work. And so thank you so much and uh, onward my friends. And say pueden, si se pueden. And um, you know, it's not lost on any of us that, that today is a day that many of us are celebrating the birth and the life of Cesar Chavez. And, and, and I couldn't think of a better place to do it and to see you know, young leaders like the leader that we have um, in council member Hugo Soto Martinez um, stepping up to make sure that the people of the community are heard and are provided for. So none of this work would be possible without our participatory budgeting project, which has run similar um, participatory budgeting projects all over the nation, including Oakland and New York. And I'm proud to welcome up uh, Michael, is Michael, yes, M Michael Kusek from participatory budgeting to say a few words. Michael, the floor is yours and thank you so much for your support. Where are the ladies? All right, well it's okay. So, thank so you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, give a shout out. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Cusack. I'm a project manager with the Participatory Budgeting Project and a proud partner of the city and the LA Civil Rights team in this work. The Participatory Budgeting Project is a national nonprofit that is committed to transforming democracy by centering community-led decision-making in communities across the country. As an opportunity for community members to design a process that works for them, identify needs in their communities, and vote to determine how public money is spent, PB is fundamentally about removing barriers to meaningful participation in self-government. PB helps us emphasize public ownership of resources. It expands transparency by improving trust in government and accountability in budgeting decisions. And it deepens democracy by expanding the volume, longevity, and really the quality of residents' engagement in city governance. We've had the privilege to share some of our experiences with this team and the learnings generated by community members who have led this work across the continent. PB is still young in the US, but it's building rich democratic cultures in cities across the country. Cultures that are specific to their own place, people, and location, like the city of LA, this community in Watts, but are all fostered by experiences PB facilitates of working together, of actually working together in our neighborhoods to address histories of racial inequity and injustice and to prior prioritize investments in historically underserved neighborhoods. That's the work and the vision that LA Repair is building on as this city and these nine zones work to mend the relationship between community and government by acknowledging a past of legislating and upholding racial inequities and by partnering together to give communities a say through this vote and a hand as community organizations lead the work of implementing these vital programs and services in the real work of healing and repair. Hopefully this initiative will be a meaningful step on the road to repair and we are a proud partner in this journey. Thank you and thank you Capri for having us. Thank you so much Michael. Um, and you're right, this is something that's been around since 1989, started in Brazil. And we couldn't be more excited to know that the communities all over America are now involved in the participatory budgeting process. I want to um, finally introduce one of our amazing, dope partners. Um, she's just someone that, that um, you know, kind of just gets everyone fired up and ready to go. So with that, um, one of our community outreach partners for Southeast Los Angeles, in this zone, you are represented very well by Miss Carrie Brodus of Los Angeles Metropolitan Churches. Miss Carrie Brodus? Miss Carrie Brodus, is she here? Yeah, she's coming, she's coming, it's okay. Yeah, we gonna clap her up until she gets to the microphone. Miss Carrie Brodus is here. She brings the power, and I just want you to know if um, Ms. Ms. Brodus, please come on, come on up and join us. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you, and we appreciate your leadership, and the mic is yours, ma'am. Thank you. You know, I thought about what I needed to say today, and I can say this, power in the people. Can I say it again? Power in the people. Hmm. When I think about Watts Tower, when I think about the old place called the Louisiana Motel, when I think about South Park, when I think about 21st and Central Avenue, I think about the people. I think about the power that we have right now. And all we have to do is get involved, be engaged, get informed, and vote. Vote, vote, vote. It's important. When I was driving down the street and I saw Miss Mobley's name, I'm gonna call the spirits of Miss Mobley, Miss Henry, Miss Jeffrey, Miss Kathy Green, Miss Cox. All of those are the women who were in this community, just like you. Went to work every day, raised their children, voted, created programs. I think about 6107 South Central Avenue that housed the first black manufacturer of dolls and games called Shindana Toys. 
And I'm here today to say we can bring that back. That's my vision. It's to see the power in the people and that we make a difference because the uniting of spider webs shall ensnarl a line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Ms. Ms. Brodus. Thank you so much for your leadership and your continued leadership uh, for the community. And I just really want to, to, to let you know that, by the way, if we have any Spanish-speaking media here, we have Edna Sandoval that is here from PBP that will be able to give remarks in Spanish. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Um, do we have any uh, Spanish-speaking media that needs to? Yes, okay. Okay, good, good, good. So Anna, Ed Edna, can you come up for a moment and just answer questions? We'll take questions at this time. And Hola, buenos días a todas, a todos, a todos. Mi nombre es Ana Sandoval. Yo soy la gerente de um, la comunicación de comunidades para el, um, el proyecto de presupuesto participativo. Y les quiero hablar un poco sobre el proyecto de LA Repair o de reparaciones de Los Ángeles. Es la reforma de Los Ángeles para la equidad y el reconocimiento público del racismo institucional. Es el primer programa piloto que se dará presupuesto participativo a eh, barrios de Los Ángeles que han sido discriminados sobre las décadas en la historia de Los Ángeles. Este es un programa que busca implementar, como dijo eh, la Council Member, una reparación histórica, económica, a los barrios marginalizados que usualmente están eh, habitados por personas negras, indígenas, inmigrantes y personas de color. Entonces, este es un esfuerzo extraordinario, es el primero, pero vamos a darle fuerte, ¿no? La primera fase del presupuesto participativo de L Repair está contando con la participación de los vecindarios de Boyle Heights, South East LA, yeah, right, right, <laughs> Mission Hills, Panorama City y North Hills. Y hoy día estamos abriendo las votaciones en este hermoso vecindario de South East uh, Los Angeles, en Watts. Si usted está aquí, vive acá, tiene una persona que estudia acá o es eh, el padre de alguien que vive acá, por favor, vamos a tener un centro de votación. Usted puede comenzar a votar el día de hoy y hacer su voz escuchar. Estamos felices de abrir las votaciones hoy. Este es un momento histórico y estamos muy felices de que ustedes estén aquí hoy día participando. Y como les comentaban, que el presupuesto participativo es un sistema que da dinero real a personas reales y hace que las personas en la comunidad decidan cómo gastarlo. Así que hay que gastar ese dinerito y hay que meterlo acá. Estoy aquí también para responder algunas preguntas que tengan los medios en español, porque aquí también está la diáspora. Entonces, muchas gracias.